so what's going on welcome to another episode of ask tanya this is the segment where you can ask your questions and i will answer them from a cosmetic chemist perspective we are on episode number six and if you would like to get your questions answered in an upcoming ask tanya video definitely go to the tab on my website that says ask tanya to submit your question and i will answer your question you guys know i don't waste any time so let's go ahead and get started the first question is from miss adrian and adrian says do certain statins cause bald spots i have a bald spot in the crown of my head and i'm on risova statin love your channel thanks thank you for your question adrian so for those who may not know Statins are a type of medication that treat high cholesterol. So in your case, Adrian, I don't think it's the Rizova statin that's causing the bald spot that you are seeing on the crown of your head. I think it could be alopecia areata. That's what it sounds like. Alopecia areata is a hair loss condition where you get like random bald spots bald spots at different parts of your head. So that's what it sounds like. And to my understanding, alopecia areata is autoimmune related. So it could be an autoimmune condition that you're experiencing or some other underlying medical thing going on here. Now, if it is, in fact, alopecia areata, that's really gonna be more of a lifestyle change. It's gonna be having a better diet, a healthier diet, getting more rest, you know, like things of that nature is gonna help tremendously to boost your immunity. If the spot does not decrease over time, I would definitely go see a dermatologist or a trichologist to have a closer look at what's going on. Okay, the next question is from Miss Gina, and Gina says, Hi, Miss Tanya, I have alopecia areata. I've incorporated pumpkin seed capsules into my supplements, but do you think it would be more effective applying it topically or taking it by mouth? I'm also reading up on DHT blockers. What are your thoughts on MSM? I'm trying to be more consistent with DIY masks, fenugreek on the powder with aloe vera, my wash days every Sunday. I'm trying to focus on scalp health, not just because of the alopecia, but just to have healthy scalp slash hair in general. I use a gentle clarifying shampoo, if that even exists. Am I trying to do too much? Am I doing more harm than good? I really appreciate you making yourself available and offering your expertise. Your Curly Girls Guide and flashcards are a godsend. Thanks, Curl Friend. Yay! Thank you, Gina. I'm so happy that the flashcards and the Curly Girls Guide is helpful to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your question. Now, to answer your question, Gina, uh, as far as like the pumpkin seed capsules, it doesn't hurt to take it topically as well. So I always tell people when you are when hair growth is the goal, tackle it internally with supplements and externally with an oil. And that's gonna help tremendously with increasing the impact of receiving hair growth or supporting hair growth, I should say. So yes, definitely do it topically. That can be pumpkin seed oil scalp massages three or four times a week. That'll help tremendously. Now, as far as my thoughts go on MSM, which is a form of sulfur, is going to be great for the hair. MSM is known for strengthening the keratin within our hair. So it helps tremendously with building up that protection, that integrity, which ultimately helps to prevent breakage and damage. So there's nothing wrong with taking MSM. And to answer your question about, are you doing too much? Am I doing more harm than good? There's nothing here that I see that is a red flag. So I would keep doing what you're doing. And while you're implementing these changes, take note of how your hair responds. Your hair is always communicating with you and it will let you know if it likes it or not. I would also incorporate what I mentioned in the previous uh, question, which is having a healthy diet because you mentioned that you have alopecia areata, which is typically tied to autoimmune. So changing how you eat, getting more rest, working out, all of those things would be a huge significant factor in reversing hair loss and getting your hair back on track. Okay, the next question is from Miss Desiree and Desiree says, can natural hair get used to using the same products over and over or am I just using them incorrectly or does my hair hate the product that I think it used to love? Okay, I love this question, Desiree, because I do think our hair can get used to a product. As far as the scientific background behind it, I'm not too sure why I need to look more into that, but I have experienced that in the past and it sucks because you try something, you love it, and the next thing you know, your hair is like, nah, I'm good. Like, really? So what I do now is I fluctuate out my products. I never just have one shampoo one conditioner, one leave-in conditioner, I always have at least two or three. 
and I'm always like, okay, shampoo day, you know, for week one, I'm using shampoo this. The next wash day, I'm using shampoo B. You know, like I'm always fluctuating out my products. That's my recommendation for you. Definitely try that out. And if you're looking for recommendations, check out my Holy Grail product videos. I'll post the link below. Okay, the next question is from Miss Pamela. And Pamela says, how and what do I use to pre-poo, wash, condition, deep condition, tone, and my dry salt and pepper short, salt, salt and pepper short natural hair? Thank you. So thank you for your question, Pamela. So when it comes to salt and pepper hair, the biggest thing here is going to be moisture. Moisture, moisture, moisture is going to be key. Now, if you haven't already, I would invest in a hair steamer. I have one, I have a few actually that I recommend in my Amazon store, I'll post a link below. But hair steaming on your wash day when you're deep conditioning will help tremendously with preventing dryness and breakage and also help to increase length retention. So get your hand on the steamer if you haven't done so already. And as far as products go, like my favorite pre-poo will always be coconut oil or babasu oil. Those two are like my go-to. So definitely get your hands on one of those. And for products like shampoo, conditioner, moisturizer, leave-in, all of the things, check out my Holy Grail product videos. I don't know if you are high porosity or low porosity. I don't think you mentioned it here, but check out those videos for some great product recommendations. I'll post the link below in the description box. Okay, the next question is from Miss Stephanie. And Stephanie says, hi, Tanya. Hope you are doing well. I like a daily routine for my 10 year old daughter that has low porosity hair. Her hair is dry and doesn't absorb water easily and I'm trying to get her to love her natural hair because she keeps comparing it to my youngest daughter who has thin, fine, curly hair. Please help with suggestions, thanks in advance. Okay, Stephanie, thank you for your question. So when it comes to the comparison, that's, uh, it's normal, you know, it is normal, especially at that age. The biggest thing I would say is just to speak life into her and empower her and let her know that her hair is so unique and it's beautiful. So I think some words of affirmation there will help tremendously for her to love her hair. As far as like a routine go, I would keep it as simple as possible. On a weekly basis, shampoo, deep condition her hair, on a daily basis, moisturize and seal in that moisture with a carrier oil like sweet almond olive to lock in that moisture. As far as her styling go, keep that simple too. Nothing tight, nothing crazy. If you can avoid relaxers, I would do that, you know, and just focus on like maybe some cute twists or some cute braids. Very, very low maintenance is what I would recommend. As far as products go, because she's 10 years old, she can also use the products that I'm mentioning in the Holy Grail product videos. And she's low porosity, so I do have one for low porosity um, people as well, like her, you know? So definitely check out that video. I'll post the link below. But the biggest thing I would say is focus on moisture, keeping it simple, and just tell her how amazing, how amazing her hair is. And, and matter of fact, Miss Stephanie, yeah, Miss Stephanie, let her see this part of the video. Let me know. She here? Okay, she here, okay. Hi, Miss Stephanie's daughter. I am Tanya. I am a cosmetic chemist. I develop hair care products and really cool, pretty stuff like, you know, shampoos and conditioners. But I wanted to talk to you because I want you to know that your hair is so beautiful. Your hair is so unique and it is special just like you. And I know sometimes you may feel kind of sad about your hair or you may compare your hair, but don't listen to those negative thoughts. I want you to be positive concerning your hair. And it's a journey. So over time, you will learn your hair. But in the meantime, I want you to embrace how beautiful and unique and special your hair is because at the same time, so are you. Beautiful, unique, and special. Take care. Okay, the last question is from Miss Malayo and she says, thank you for all your natural hair advice. What are the best oils I should put on my scalp to grow my hair? I recently did a big chop. Okay, so I love this question. Um, so honestly, when it comes to oils, you can create like your own blend of oils. I talk about this pretty often, but if you want something really simple, I would say get your hands on some jojoba oil Get like a, a two ounce or a four ounce bottle. Get your hands on some jojoba oil and add a few drops of peppermint oil, rosemary oil. If you want to get a little bit of fancy, add a little bit of lavender oil or eucalyptus. There's so much you can add. But I would say 
um, jojoba as your carrier oil because you never want to put essential oil directly on your scalp. It can irritate, so you got to have it mixed into a carrier like jojoba. But get your hands on some jojoba oil, peppermint, rosemary, lavender, and or eucalyptus oil. Just a few drops, like three or five drops, maybe six. If you feel, you know, a little fancy, you don't do, 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 do. But that's all you really need. Keep it very simple, but make sure you put it in like a four ounce bottle with that jojoba oil being the majority of that bottle and a few drops of those essential oils. Put it on your scalp three or four times a week. Massage it in, take before and after photos to track your progress and keep me posted. All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed this sixth episode of Ask Tanya. Once again, to get your questions featured in an upcoming video, check out the Ask Tanya tab on my website. I'll post the link below for you to submit your questions. In the meantime, for more Curly Chemistry content, be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell to stay in the loop for the next Curly Chemistry video. And if you want to learn more about your hair from a cosmetic chemist perspective, check out these amazing ebooks I have up here that I created just for you my best advice best techniques in those ebooks so definitely check them out and if you would like one-on-one -on -one hair care coaching with me where I can help you with your hair care challenges and create a customized hair care regimen for you with product suggestions sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me I'll post the link below for you with more information all right guys I love you and I'll talk to you guys soon bye